First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, on our first episode of our new series, Sharpshooter Workshop. In this episode, we're going to show you how to make a button polishing board. Now, for a lot of people, you may not think, well, I'm not in the, I'm not representing the Marines. What do I need to polish, polish brass for? Well, military protocol plays an important part in Civil War reenacting that far too many reenactors overlook. Unless your impression is strictly a campaigner, at some point you should be polishing your uh, coat buttons, your belt buckles, your cartridge boxes, because you might have to go to a formal ball or an officer's dinner, or you may need to be on color guard or represent your unit at a special uh, uh, event such as a Memorial Day or a Veterans Day service. In those cases, you would want to make sure your uniform was in top condition. Uh, the military traditions today are just as much uh, real as they were during the Civil War. So we're going to start out with a really simple project that just about anyone should be able to make. Now, as we start the workshop series, please be sure to ask all sorts of questions in the comments section down below. So if you see me using a tool that you don't have and you want to know a different way to get the same results, be sure to let me know. Also, if you don't want to use any power tools and you want to go completely traditional, I could do a short video on how to make everything using strictly period correct tools. But I'm trying to create these videos uh, with the thought that most, these are the tools that many people who would be handy or might have a space somewhere to have tools would have on hand. So this, if you're not familiar with polish, polishing your brass, uh, these are all fairly similar. They come in different styles. But the whole concept is, whether it's a small vest button or a large sack coat button or a frock button, is you have a hole for your button to fit and a slide so you can protect the material uh, from your metal polish. And you polish and polish and polish, and then you slip it off and you can go on to your next one. So with that, I want to say one other thing. If you want more information about this project, I cannot recommend these two books enough. If you uh, have a few tools, you're handy, you're interested in making your own Civil War uh, camp equipment, these two books, Civil War Woodworking Volumes 1 and 2, are essential resources. Uh, this, is, this is my my number one source for when I try to kit out our company and make sure that all of our camp boxes and hardware and accoutrements are as period correct as possible. The pictures in here are fantastic. And if you get in Volume 2, they actually have the pattern for the button polishing board and they also have plans online AJ Hamler the author has stencils that you can download for free and other plans that you can download for free so if you don't maybe don't have the money now to purchase these books definitely look up AJ Hamler and Civil War Woodworking online and you can kind of get a good start on where you want to go with your Civil War Woodworking projects So the first thing we got to do is we need to start with some fairly thin stock. Now in the book, the author uses uh, 3 8 th inch thick stock. Um, I'm sorry, 3 16 Now 3 16 is an oddball size. You're probably not going to find it at your local home store. Now one thing that works perfectly fine is quarter inch and sometimes even places like Home Depot or Lowe's or even a hobby shop will have uh, quarter inch thick. Uh, hardwood or, or uh, even softwood. So this is, I think this is a cut off from a uh, two by something. Now, if you can't get a hold of that, but you have a decent table saw, a lot of the stuff that I do, I just mill myself. So if you needed say three sixteenths or a quarter of an inch, then you just take your two by four, you cut off the rounded corner. So you have a nice flat surface on both sides, you have a nice square billet, and then you set your fence so you can start ripping, and you raise your blade, nick a little bit here, flip it over, do it again, and you keep raising your blade until this guy pops right off, 
And you can clean it up with uh, sandpaper, a hand plane, or if you have a power pointer, you can clean it up like that too. So there's lots of different ways you can get this. So don't stress so much on the type of wood or the thickness of wood for this project. We do have this set for inch and five eighths on the table saw. So I have my safety equipment on and I want to turn on uh, the dust collection and get, the, get this piece ripped down to width. Now with our strip at an inch and five eighths, we are going to need to cut it to length, which is roughly eight and a half inches. The exact dimensions aren't that important. We got to get our rip fence out of the way. And get in. Uh, Miter gauge, and we. Measure eight and a half inches. Square it up real quick so it's easier to see. Now it's time to make some noise again. Okay, so now for the rest of this, it's going to be really important that we find the center of our piece. Now there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can just measure it and try to do the math. You can use different marking gauges. If you really get into Civil War woodworking, it's going to be worth knowing how to use these marking gauges. And you just put a dot, flip it around, put a dot, and then you try to split the difference. Actually, I kind of eyeballed that pretty close. Um, you can also get or make these little nifty gadgets here. This one's available from Rockler, not a sponsor. Just holds a pencil, you twist it on your board, and it'll help you draw a center line. So, I personally like the look and feel of the marking gauge. So, use a marking gauge when you're going along the grain. You want to make sure you take light passes so that the gauge doesn't get caught in the grain of the wood. And send you giving you a wiggly line. So now we need to make a hole for our buttons to fit in. So we're going to take a break here and I'll catch you over at the drill press. Now we're here at the, here at the drill press and we need to drill a one inch hole somewhere in the top but definitely in the center of our button board blank. Now I have set up here a Forstner bit in the drill press. You can do this just as easily with a cordless drill or a corded drill. You definitely want to use a Forstner bit. Save the hole saw uh, bits for construction. We're, we don't want to have a whole lot of blowout. So it doesn't really matter where you drill your hole. Uh, from the top, you don't want it too close because um, to, you don't want to crack your piece of wood. <clears throat> so line it up and we turn it on and we get going. Now you want to go slow and I'll show you a little trick to make sure you don't get blowout. So you want to drill just deep enough that the, the, the guide point on the bit pops through the other side. And you flip it over and drill back the other way. So it keeps your edges crisp, but it also keeps your hole nice and square. Just like that.
we're done. Now uh, we're gonna take you back over to the workbench and we're gonna cut our slot for uh, our buttons to slide. Okay, now we have the little billet cut. We have the hole drilled out in the center of it. Now we need to make our slot. The slot only needs to be about three inches. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, <clears throat> it should be about three sixteenths and that's kind of an odd measurement if you don't do a whole lot of woodworking. And it's essentially a, a fat eighth of an inch. Now, <clears throat> you could carefully try to measure either side of your center line to try to get that 3 sixteenths. Or you could just take a really simple shortcut and take another uh, scrap piece of wood that's the same thickness, center it, and trace your line. <clears throat> And there, there you have it. So, say you, you're making a bunch of these, then you could probably just use a template. But I'm going to do this with you as if this is our very first one together. <clears throat> so there we go. Now. <clears throat> Now, if you get the Civil War woodworking books, you can see here there's this really nice template that you could uh, enlarge on your computer and print it out. You can see how you can make neat little handles and definitely around the corners. So, worthwhile uh, investment if you're looking to get into more projects like these. So now we've got to cut this out. You can do this any number of ways. Um, I am going to use a uh, coping saw because most people have coping saws and if you don't then you can usually pick them up at you know thrift stores or yard sales for like a dollar. So all you got to do is get yourself set up. poke through. <clears throat> now you can also use a, a scroll saw. Um, I guess you could even whittle this guy if you wanted to. It would be time consuming. Set your blade. And then you just follow your center line.
this apart. Get it out of the way. Now you can turn the cur the turn the curve there with your coping saw if you wanted to, but I'm just planning on taking a eighth inch chisel. You can uh, just go in here with some sandpaper to clean up all your edges, all your cut marks, make it nice and smooth so nothing catches on your uniforms, around your edges. And if you, you can definitely just design this however you want. You could round your corners down, you could draw your own handle working off your center point. So if you don't have a template or you don't have access to the book, you can just as easily imagine what your template would look like. And then you can kind of go from there. The other thing you can do is um, just borrow one from someone else that you reenact with and trace it at an event. Now, this is pretty much good as done. I mean, you can even cut it down so it's even shorter if you wanted to fit well in your in your pack. The one thing you definitely want to do is you, you want to coat it with something. These ones that I made for our company, I, uh, I put some stain on it and two or three coats of shellac. And the, the whole idea with treating the wood is that the metal polish that you use doesn't build up in the wood and uh, you get a lot more life out of your button polishing board with a little bit of care or treatment of the wood. And just like that, you can see, even in its most simple state, it works just fine and you're ready to polish. Uh, I hope you liked uh, this video, uh, the first of our series of the Sharpshooter Workshop. Uh, we'd love to hear any questions or comments you might have, so be sure to leave those down below. And we'd appreciate a like and subscription from you. And we'll uh, see you next time.